I'm now joined by Congressman Tom Tiffany. Congressman, thanks so much for joining us on the show. Good to be with you, Dan. Looking forward to that of forecast course, for tomorrow. That sounds awesome. <laughs> but you were in a much warmer place recently. You recently took a trip down to the U.S.-Mexico border. How does that impact us here in northern Wisconsin, your constituents? Yeah, you know, I get that question often uh, because I've made a number of trips down to the southern border as well as Panama a year ago in regards to what is happening at our border. And uh, what we're seeing happen on the southern border is coming to Wisconsin. For example, the fentanyl and methamphetamine that is coming across the southern border really in record amounts. Um, that is coming right here. And if you talk to sheriffs and local law enforcement, they're feeling the impact of it with the drug overdoses we're seeing, things like that. We had over 100,000 drug overdose deaths in America for the first time in our history in 2021. A lot of that is because of the fentanyl that is coming across the southern border. And then, of course, every state's a border state at this point. Um, when I went down uh, two years ago, things were largely under control, progress was being made, but now the border really has fallen apart. And when you talk to the Border Patrol, they'll tell you that um, they're basically a babysitting service at this point. I want to turn our attention to the January 6th committee. Right now they are investigating members of the Trump inner circle in regards to the events on January 6th and the events that happened preceding that. I'm curious, you voted against the formation of that committee. Why did you vote that way? Um, just how it was set up. I mean, first of all, the minority, which we are in the minority, Speaker Pelosi has the ability to name who's going to be on the committee. She did not allow us to name who we wanted on our committee. And it's really unprecedented. While they have the majority, they have the votes, you always let the minority uh, decide who they want to have on the committee. She did not allow that. The other thing that has happened there is that Speaker Pelosi is not re uh, releasing her communications that went on on January 6th. That should be revealed to the public also. So I really support an all-encompassing investigation. If that would be done, that's not happening. Inflation is at a high right now, 8.5%. You've been very critical of the Biden administration, how they've handled inflation. I'm curious if you have any solutions. How would you tamp down inflation? Uh, number one, don't spend more money. We already have more proposals that are coming from the administration for uh, ostensibly COVID relief. And that's the worst thing that could happen because all that spending is leading to the inflation. It's time for the federal government to stop the spending spree. In fact, I'm signing on uh, real soon here to a proposal from the Republican Study Committee to get to a balanced budget in six years. It's time for fiscal responsibility. That's why I originally ran in 2010 for the state legislature because of a $3 billion deficit. We have to get back to fiscal responsibility. That's part of what's driving that. Inflation. During the Trump administration, he issued tax cuts as as well as the CARES Act, that's put a lot of money into the United States. Do you think his actions contributed at all to inflation? There is no doubt that the spending that has went on has been both Democrats and Republicans, and it's time for there to be fiscal responsibility. In fact, when you um, look at the budgeting process, we have a really good budgeting process in Wisconsin, and I sat on the Finance Committee and helped write three of those budgets. That does not exist at the federal level at this point. It's been over 10 years since there's been a true budget process that's been used at the federal level, and it's part of the reason we have $30 trillion in debt now. Today is Earth Day. It's celebrated internationally. It has its roots right here in Wisconsin. What's something that you think the federal government can do to steward environmentalism? Uh, well, one of the things that the federal government should be doing at this point is they should be looking at issuing more mining permits so that those uh, some of the green proposals that are out there, like the electrification of cars, that's going to take a lot of minerals to do that. And we're very dependent on China, Russia, uh, some of the African countries for that, uh, for them at this point. If we're going to get to electrification, which requires an enormous amount of minerals to be mined. Some of that should be mined in the United States because we will do it in the most environmentally responsible manner. A lot of your constituents rely on tourism for their economy, especially in Ashland and the Northwoods of Wisconsin. If there was mining in the nearby area, that would likely affect tourism. Does that give you any pause? Oh, I think that the two are not mutually exclusive. A strong economy and a good environment work together. In fact, the stronger we have in terms of economic growth, the more money we can put into environmental protection. Uh, protection. Uh, they are not mutually exclusive. And let's talk about climate change right now. Temperatures are increasing across the planet. Do you think the federal government has any role in trying to mitigate climate change? Um, Certainly the federal government has a role, but I think first of all we have to figure out 
are we actually seeing this driven by man or is it naturally occurring? Um, because whenever we hear that 97% of the scientists um, agree that climate change is happening, um, is that happening as a result of natural occurrences? I mean, where we sit right now, there was a mile sh uh, thick sheet of ice here in northern Wisconsin 10,000 years ago. Thank the Lord there was climate change so that we could live here. So is this a natural evolution that's going on with our environment or is it actually man-caused? We don't know that yet. Let's turn our attention to Ukraine. The Biden administration has been sending a lot aid, a lot of aid over to Ukraine. Do you support the administration's actions? Yes, um, generally I support it, but um, I just saw a chart this afternoon that showed the amount of aid and military aid that we're sending from the United States versus countries, including the NATO countries like Germany. Um, and it is a pittance that they're putting in. They should be um, they should be footing much more of the bill here rather than just relying on the United States, which they've been doing now for ever since World War II. Congressman, we are out of time. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. It's good to join you, Dan. Of course. We'll be right back. Jeff will have his full look at your weather.